Good morning, faithful listeners. You have tuned in to the P40 Ministries podcast, the one place where you can get a daily explanatory Bible reading to start your day strong. This is your host, Jen, bringing you a brand new episode out of Genesis. Hey, good morning, friends and faithful listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning to the P40 Ministries podcast with Jen, your host, who happens to be myself. And so let's go ahead and talk about the rest of Genesis here. We are going to be discussing the last portion of Genesis chapter 49. Then we will be discussing Genesis chapter 50, which is the last chapter of Genesis. Isn't that crazy? Now, of course, we won't be discussing Genesis 50 today. We will leave that for probably Monday and Wednesday, possibly Friday as well. So we only have about a week left before we are out of Genesis and into Exodus. Now, that being said, I had mentioned a couple episodes back that I might be taking a short break from the podcast, and I kind of decided, no, I will not do that because I want everybody to have a consistent morning routine which is the reason I actually created this podcast was not only to kind of shine the light on the Bible and help people understand it a little bit more and bring it to humanly kind of terms, because oftentimes we don't like to think of these these people as humans, more like uh, fairy tales and stories like that, but also to help you guys have a consistent morning routine where you get up and listen to the Bible and do stuff like that. And so that is why I have decided to not take that little break but rather to continue on with the podcast Um, that might change in the future. But I will let you know, of course, beforehand on the days that I do take a break and stuff like that. So we will talk today about Genesis chapter 49, verses 16 through 33, and finish up this chapter of the Bible. Now, I will be reading, as I always do, out of the W.E.B. version of the Bible, but you can read out of whatever version you prefer to read out of. So grab your cup of coffee and let's go ahead and start reading. Dan will judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan will be a serpent on the trail, an adder on the path, that bites the horse's heels so that his rider falls backwards. I have waited for your salvation, Yahweh. A troop will press on Gad, but he will press on their heel. Asher's food will be rich. He will produce royal dainties. Naphtali is a doe set free, who bears beautiful fawns. Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine by a spring. His branches run over the wall. The archers have severely grieved him, shot at him, and persecuted him. But his bow remained strong. The arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of your father, who will help you, by the Almighty, who will bless you, with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies below, blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of your father have prevailed above the blessings of your ancestors, above the boundaries of the ancient hills. They will be on the head of Joseph, on the crown of the head of him who is separated from his brothers. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning, he will devour the prey, and at evening, he will divide the plunder. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father spoke to them and blessed them. He blessed everyone according to his own blessing. He instructed them and said to them, I am gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is the field of Mechpala, which is before Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field from Ephron the Hittite as a burial place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife, and there I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is therein, which was purchased from the children of Heth, When Jacob finished charging his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed, breathed his last, and was gathered to his people. So this is the story of when Jacob dies. He finishes talking about his sons, and we had just discussed his last sons a couple days ago, where he was discussing the sons of Leah, his first wife. So he talks about those sons, and that's where we stopped the other day. So now we're going to talk about uh, the sons of his next wife, which was Rachel, and then also his concubines, um, 
oh gosh, what were their names again? Uh, Bilha and Zilpa. So we're going to talk about them. So he starts off by talking about Dan here. He says, Dan will judge his people as one of the, tri- uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. So yes, we know that for a fact. Dan had produced some judges. I believe the, the biggest one that we know of is Samson. He produced Samson, the, the tribe of Israel. And so Samson was of Dan, the tribe of Dan. And he was one of the most famous judges in Israel's history. And also one of the most corrupt and kind of weird. And we will talk about his story when we get to judges. It's, it's pretty fascinating. Samson in general is a very interesting person. But anyway, Jacob is talking here about Dan. And he says that Dan will also be a serpent on the trail or an adder on the path that bites at the horse's heels so that the rider falls backwards. And this was also very true of Dan's history. Dan had a problem with worshiping other gods. We see that all throughout the Bible. I think there's a whole chapter about it where Jeroboam, one of the kings, set up uh, false idols in Dan. And uh, that was later on, of course. And so Dan had a lot of trouble with idol worship. And they ended up kind of pulling other tribes into this idol worship as well. And we will see that later on as we talk more about Dan and the 12 tribes of Israel once we get into judges and stuff like that. But In verse 18, it's kind of interesting here what Jacob says. All of a sudden, it's kind of this random verse kind of thrown in there. He says, I have waited for your salvation, Yahweh. What a unique thing to say after he's talking about Dan and how Dan is going to pull other people down with idol worship. He says, I have waited for your salvation, Yahweh. So the word salvation in Hebrew is actually Yeshua. If you didn't know that, it's also the same name as Jesus's name. Jesus's name was Yeshua. And Jacob's almost saying here, I have waited for Yeshua, Yahweh. And what a thing to say after he's talking about the tribe of Dan. And you know, the author of Genesis, who happens to be Moses, didn't know who Yeshua was going to be. He had no clue that Yeshua was the name for Jesus. And neither did Jacob at this point, or perhaps he did know, I I don't know. But one way or the other, Jacob here is crying out for Jesus to Yahweh. I have waited for Yeshua. And what's so significant about that verse and where it's placed in this entire chapter is it's right after Dan. He's talking about Dan pulling people down with idol worship. And that is when the fall of Israel happens, when basically Babylon captures Israel. And it's right after all of that, all of the first and second kings, where we we see the idol worship happening again and again and again. And that is when we start seeing the prophets happening as well, where the prophets are saying, there is going to be someone who comes and saves us from this, these great sins, basically. And so right after Jacob is talking about Dan pulling the other tribes down, that is when he mentions Yeshua's name, which is so fascinating to me. And we never notice these kind of things. You know, I would have passed that straight up if I hadn't gone and looked at some commentaries on this chapter. And so I I really like commentaries personally. Sometimes they help me see different insights that I hadn't noticed before. But I actually looked at um, Enduring Word commentaries and they mentioned that, that the word salvation is Yeshua in Hebrew. And isn't that fascinating? So I, I thought that was pretty cool. But after this, in verse 19, Jacob starts talking about one of his other sons who was named Gad. It says a troop will press in on Gad, but he will press in on their heel. Now, I'm not exactly sure what this is referring to. Probably at some point there were some troops that were pressing in on the tribe of Gad, but Gad overcame. Now, there's not a whole lot of information on Gad in general, but um, but that's probably what happens at some time. And maybe we will read about that later on. And then after this, he talks about Asher. It says, Asher's food will be rich. He will produce royal dainties. Asher, in general, another tribe that was not mentioned a whole lot. But Moses actually mentioned the tribe of Asher, I believe in Deuteronomy. I believe Moses said something like, Asher is the most blessed of all the sons. And yes, I believe that when they did finally settle the tribe of Asher, they settled in a very rich and luxurious place and probably were able to produce luxury luxuries for other people, hence uh, producing royal dainties, which is what Jacob says here. After this, he talks about Naphtali being a doe that is set free and who bears beautiful fawns. 
So the W.E.B. version kind of words that weird. <laughs> but in other versions of the Bible that I was reading of this, for example, the NIV version, they say Naphtali bears beautiful words rather than uh, bears beautiful fawns. So I'm not quite sure where the W.E.B. version got its translation from. But um, when I was looking at this, a lot of the versions mentioned Naphtali having beautiful words. So we know from reading in Matthew and discussing some of the chapters in Matthew that Jesus traveled around a lot to Naphtali. And actually, there was a verse, I think, in Isaiah that talks about Jesus going to Naphtali and being a light in the darkness in the region of Naphtali, which is kind of where I think Jacob is going with this prophecy. First off, he did talk about Jesus a little bit, kind of, in verse 18. And now he's talking about Naphtali bearing beautiful fawns or bearing beautiful words. Jesus was going to Naphtali to spread the word to spread light. And so maybe this is where Jacob is is getting this prophecy from because Jesus was the light in Naphtali. After this, he talks about Rachel's two sons, who were obviously Joseph and Benjamin here. But he talks about Joseph a lot. And he talks about Joseph being a, a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine by the spring. His branches are massive. It He grows and that's kind of what Joseph did. And I think this is not just prophecy, but also kind of talking about Joseph himself and the struggles that Joseph went through, yet he grew into this fruitful vine. It says here that in verse 23, Jacob says, The archers have severely grieved him, shot at him, and persecuted him, but his bow remained strong. And that's obviously talking about Joseph's brothers who shot at him, grieved him, persecuted him, and all those kinds of things. Yet Joseph himself remained strong. And it does say in the Bible that Joseph's two sons, who were um, Ephraim and Manasseh, they became two half-tribes of Israel, and they were very, very blessed tribes as well. So yes, this is, this is both prophecy that Jacob is saying here and honestly just talking about Joseph's life in general. So it says here that Joseph's bow remained strong. His arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob. So basically, God supported Joseph through everything that Joseph went through. God was there making Joseph strong, allowing Joseph to prosper and all that good stuff. After this, in verse 25, he talks about how blessed Joseph is and all that stuff. He's so blessed. And the blessings of your father have prevailed above the blessings of your ancestors. Jacob is a really hard person for me to figure out a little bit. First, he is wrestling with God. Then he is super upset. Then he sees angels and then he forgets about the angels he sees. Then he's talking to Pharaoh about how, how torturous his life has been, basically. Now he's saying how blessed he is. So it kind of seems to me Jacob flip-flops a lot all throughout his life. He's constantly struggling between being Jacob and being Israel. And uh, this is one of these things, again, it almost looks like it says the blessings of your father have prevailed above the blessings of your ancestors. He's talking to Joseph about how blessed he is, saying that he is the most blessed out of all of Joseph's ancestors. That's why, to me, Jacob is just so hard for me to figure out. He's just a very uh, unique character in general who constantly struggles, constantly struggles between um, fear and not fear, uh, dissatisfaction and satisfaction. And we see a lot of struggle going on with Jacob for his entire life from the very beginning when he was with Esau. And then now even towards the end, we see him struggling between being Israel and Jacob in certain moments. So it is a very interesting thing to mention that Jacob is just such a such a weird guy and and like i said i kind of struggle with with jacob's character a little bit just because jacob to me and and i know that we are all human and we all have our struggles but to me jacob seems like he struggles the most out of all of the patriarchs just struggles so much with with his own nature and stuff like that and yet god was just so merciful again and again and again and we see that all throughout the bible just god being so insanely merciful to everybody and loving them so so much so after this um 
It says here that Joseph will basically be wearing a crown and uh, he was separated from his brothers pretty much. So he distinguishes Joseph as being different from the other brothers. After this, he talks about his last son, Benjamin. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning, he will devour his prey and at evening, he will divide the plunder. This verse here is just so, so on point for the tribe of Benjamin because I've read through Judges before. Judges is actually one of my favorite books of the Bible, as odd as that sounds. I love Judges because it just shows God's character again and again and again. The tribes of Israel constantly in every single chapter, it seems like are doing something ridiculous, doing something super insane in one chapter, going back to God in another in another chapter, worshiping idols in the next chapter. And yet God is always faithful to Israel again and again and again and faithful to the tribes of Israel. So Benjamin, knowing the book of Judges and a couple other things, um, this is just so accurate to who the tribe of Benjamin became. They were ravenous. They were wolves. They did devour the prey. One story out of Judges that we will talk about later is pretty interesting, describing the men of Benjamin, where they basically raped this woman kind of to death in the morning. And then at night, the, the guy who owned this poor woman, this poor slave, divided her body at night and sent it out to the different tribes of Israel. Yes, that is literally a story in the Bible that we will talk about. And it's an insane story and probably the worst story in the Bible. I would say it's probably the most heart-wrenching, disgusting story in the Bible of, of just how far the tribes just fell away from God, basically. And that was the tribe of Benjamin that did that. It seems to me like Jacob is foreshadowing that, that horrific story of what happens to that poor woman and the men of Benjamin that had done that to her. But this also shows, kind of coming back to Jacob, even though Benjamin was one of his favorite sons, we see that after Joseph is sold into slavery, that he, Jacob basically gets a new favorite son who happened to be Benjamin. And even though Benjamin was one of Jacob's favorite sons, in this blessing, he didn't really bless Benjamin that much. You would think that if this was fake, if all of this was fake, that Jacob would be blessing Benjamin so, so, so much because Benjamin was one of his favorite sons. Yet he says this. There's no blessing here. It's just Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning, he devours the prey. And at evening, he divides the plunder. There's no goodwill almost for Benjamin here. And so that is that is one thing that we can think about that, you know, if the Bible weren't true and someone just made up the story, no one would think to make up that Jacob didn't bless his son at the end of his life and did this. Everyone would think, oh, he's going to bless his son a whole bunch if, if this was all made up. So this is one of those things that we can think about that says, is the Bible really true? Because this is an inconsistency almost to what human nature is. If someone was just penning this and, you know, making this up, they would never have thought to do that, to make Jacob not bless Benjamin at the end of Jacob's life. So that's something I wanted to mention in there. So after this, it says here from verses 28 to 33, basically, Jacob dies. He explains what he wants to be done with his body at the end of his life, that he wants to go back to Canaan and be buried where his ancestors were buried, where Abraham um, and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah and Leah are buried. Now, I do find it interesting now that I mention that, that Leah was the only one of his wives that were, was buried in that tomb. I want to mention that because Rachel was not buried there. She was buried under some oak, I'm pretty sure. But Leah was the only one of Jacob's wives and his first wife that was buried in that tomb. It kind of seems to me, as odd as this is, and I'm kind of going off on a rabbit trail here, the wives that God ordained almost to the patriarchs are the ones that are buried in that tomb. I'm not going to talk too much on that one, but that's just my own observation that I'm throwing out there. So Leah is buried in that cave. 
And now Jacob wants to be also buried in that cave, even though he had his choice of caves, probably in Egypt to be bar buried in. Probably he could have been buried in one of the, the pyramids for all I know. He, he could have been. I don't know if they had them back then, but he could have chosen any tomb to be buried in because he was Joseph's father and also respected of Pharaoh himself. We remember talking about that a little bit. So Jacob could have been buried in any of these beautiful Egyptian tombs, but he chose to be buried in the land of Canaan. So it says in verse 33, Jacob finally finished talking about his sons and he put his feet back on his bed. And the Bible says that he breathed his last and was gathered to his people. So friends, we are almost done with Genesis. We are pretty much done. We are going to be talking about the last chapter of Genesis starting on Monday. So join me then at 6 a.m. to discuss Genesis chapter 50, at least the first part of it. And we will talk about that then. Now, friends, I am writing a Bible study right now. It is called Out of the Mire. I am almost done with it. The last things I'm really doing with it right now are designing the book cover and formatting it and just editing it at this point, making sure everything is correct, doing the final editing and the final formatting and everything like that. Hopefully this book will be up and ready for sale in the next two weeks. It will be a complete study, an eight-week study on the life of Joseph. So I'm very, very excited about all of this and to talk about that with everybody. This is something that was very meaningful to me. It's been something that I've been writing for the past two years. I started writing this study back in 2019 when I was going through some of the worst times of my entire life. I started writing this study. So it was so interesting to me to go back a couple weeks ago and really reread everything that I had written back in 2019. It was just so fascinating to me to see where I was back then and um, what I was writing about. So this book is just it means so much to me, and it's going to be called Out of the Mire, based on Psalm 40, verses 1 and 2, which is also what P40 Ministries stands for, is Psalm 40, verses 1 and 2. And so uh, this means so much to me. Those two verses from Psalm 40 are some of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. I absolutely love them. They mean so much to me. This study means a lot to me, and so does this podcast. So guys, if you could share the podcast on your social media platforms and also like it or rate it five stars that would be so so helpful and beneficial to me and also to everybody who who comes across the p40 ministries podcast we are talking about nothing but the bible here on this podcast so definitely spread the word share it with your friends and with your neighbors and friends and faithful listeners happy listening and god bless